Hi guys, in this video, we'll talk about structure of ATP synthase and how it makes ATP. Um, this is a structure of ATP synthase I drew. This is your inner mitochondrial membrane. This is the mitochondrial matrix side and this is the mitochondrial matrix side. ATP synthase is composed of two subunits. One is called F0 and one is called F1. F0 is the transmembrane part and F1 is a peripheral protein on the mitochondrial matrix side this F1 is never on this side this is always on this side F0 is composed of A1 B2 C 9 to 12 and um, so this blue subunit is our A these green things are C depending on organism an organism could have 9 to 12 bacteria has 10 and it has two B, which are these sticks right here. So that's our F0. F1 contains alpha 3, beta 3, gamma delta epsilon. And here, uh, all these blue structures are alpha and beta, and they are organized one after another. So you have alpha, beta, alpha, beta, alpha, beta, and you have six total, three alpha and three beta. Gamma is this part, Epsilon is this one and Delta is this one and this makes up the F1 and uh, Using urea or some other solution you can separate the F1 and F0 and the way this machine works is Hydrogen from intermembrane space it first enters the A subunit of F0 and from A it binds in this pocket in C and this thing rotates and let's say a hydrogen bound here makes a complete turn and it comes back to A again and it leaves to the mitochondrial matrix that's how the hydrogen rotates this this is called a C ring C ring um, so you can think that even though let's say we use some enzyme that separates F1 from F0 then this C ring still keeps working and the gradient of H plus would be dissipated and when the, this C ring rotates, it causes gamma subunit of F1 to rotate. So rotor portion of this machine is gamma subunit and C ring. And this alpha 3 and beta 3, they don't rotate. They stay static. And delta and B2, they are just for support. Um, now let's talk about how ATP is actually formed. So you have alpha, beta protomers. Protomers means functional unit in protein and it's alpha and beta subunit that create ATP in this molecule and even though the protomer consists of alpha and beta subunit catalytic activity is done only by the beta subunit so one group of alpha and beta it can either be in L state it can either be in T state or it can either be in O state alpha loosely bound state where it loosely binds to ADP and PI, T for tight state where ADP and PI are tightly bound and it converts into ATP, O is for open state where the protomer doesn't bind to anything and the ATP leaves the alpha beta subunit. And at any time, so you have three sets of alpha beta subunit and at any time those three different protomers are in different states. You don't have two of these protomers in T state and one in one in O. Each of these three protomers of alpha beta subunit one of them is always in L the other if one is in L the other one is in T and the other one is in O but one single protomer it switches from L to T and T to O that's how it switches so let, let's talk about let, let's say this protomer right here in the front alpha beta so let's say this was initially in L state and when it's in L state it binds to ADP and PI and when this gamma subunit rotates this gamma subunit rotates when this C ring rotates so when this gamma subunit rotates the if this is in L that's going to convert into T this alpha beta protomer and when it converts from L to T then the ADP and PI bound to it converts into ATP and when it rotates again then uh, the ATP this T side converts into O side and the ATP leaves and when it rotates again 
the O side changes into L side and this is ready to be bound to ADP and PI again and in every rotation in a complete rotation that this gamma subunit makes 3.5 ATP can be made so this is how ATP synthase molecule works hope you guys understood my videos thank you for watching bye